One of the most common questions I get when I publish a cycling head unit or GPS is, what's the point? Why don't you just use your smartphone? So in this video, I'm gonna share exactly why I don't use my smartphone, but rather a GPS head unit for all of my bikepacking endeavors. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, I'm a big tech guy. I'll be the first to tell you that. And many of us millennials are. I was born in 1987, meaning I was brought up with multimedia in schools, computers in our homes, and eventually cell phones in our hands, which all shaped my life differently than the generation before me. I remember playing on my computer in my basement as a 10-year-old, uh, Sega, Nintendo, and PlayStation as I grew a little older. And by high school, I had these awesome things, remember? A little flip phone action, texting with the T9 feature, getting on the phone, talking to your buddies. Hey, let's go throw around a disc golf, yeah. Good times, right? And of course, by college, I, well, had my first smartphone. So technology has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. And this likely explains my obsession with tech as it pertains to the bike world. When I was preparing for the Arizona Trail Race in 2013, I realized I needed a reliable device to upload a GPX file and follow a track. In, in 2013, no real cycling head units offered good navigation with solid battery life, and smartphones were certainly not very advanced yet. So I ended up stumbling upon the eTrex series because, well, everybody in this bikepacking and ultra endurance space was recommending them at the time. Originally a hiking and handheld GPS unit, Garmin made an aftermarket mount for handlebars and it became a trendy choice in the bikepacking world. And ever since that point, I have used a GPS unit for navigation. It's convenient to look down and follow a line instead of taking a map out or your phone out to see where you are. It helps save time when you get to a junction and it reminds me of an upcoming turn and even showcases waypoints for important points en route. All right, so now you might be asking, how do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy. All of the uh, popular units out there also can quickly upload a route or a track to the device. Wahoo, Hammerhead, and Garmin all have ways to rapidly upload tracks to a unit themselves with or without wires. This means you can download a route from a route page super quickly or build a route on your own on a desktop and upload it to the device. I use Ride with GPS because of its simplicity and my familiarity with it, and that's where all of my routes now live. Uh, and I actually did a video on how to make a route using it, uh, and you can find that video in the description description below. All right, so before we move on, I just want to take a quick moment to let everybody know that this video is supported in part by Tailfin. Tailfin designs and engineers technical bikepacking equipment for almost any kind of adventure. Innovation and quality are at the heart of what makes them tick, and their constant strive to create better performing gear means that you can just focus on enjoying the ride. They offer a range of options for hauling your gear, whether you're doing a race like the Tour Divide or just escaping for an overnighter. So for more on Tailfin, make sure to hit this card in the top right corner. You can also find a link below. So I do think it's worth noting that smartphones can also double as hands-free navigation, but having a 100% watertight device built for the demands of off-road cycling is reassuring. Uh, I don't know about you all, but I don't feel very comfortable when I mount uh, my cell phone, my smartphone to the handlebars, especially in the rain or on muddy single track or roads. These head units are made to get dirty and they're durable in the event of a crash. However, if the unit does fail in a crash, my phone or my smartphone serves as my backup. And while phones can endure constant vibrations for days on end, I definitely don't think they were built for it. My theory is if I treat my phone well, I'll be able to have it a little bit longer. And while buying a head unit certainly is another added cost, for me, it's worth it as I would rather not pay for another phone. These head units are also designed for viewing in bright 
sunlight or even in the dark. In contrast, phones don't do very well in bright sunny conditions, something I find myself in nearly all the time here in Colorado. And on the temperature side, for the most part, they also work much better when temperatures hit the extremes. I can't tell you how often my phone has died uh, in my pocket from just being in sub-freezing temperatures or how often I'm told to cool the device because it was sitting in the sun for too long. All right, so battery life is is a big one and likely the most crucial factor to me. So while some head units are certainly better than others in this regard, the fact that I don't actually need to drain my phone's battery each day is ideal. When I go bikepacking, I use my cell phone for family communication, a few photos or videos along the way, and I also use it for, say, searching weather or looking for services in a town. So when I have a dedicated device for riding, I'm saving my phone's battery life. Battery life with most of today's head units will likely get you up to two days without charge, but upwards to five with these new solar devices from Garmin. And you'll probably need to charge your phone daily if you use it for navigation, which also prematurely reduces the battery health. There are also plenty of other helpful features inside these units. Some I certainly don't use, but they do add value. All of these devices come with some sort of built-in memory to store your tracks and routes. They come with base maps, elevation profiles, climbing features, temperature sensors, and the ability to sync with other sensor sensors such as in-reach devices or electronic shifting. They also come with simple things like sunrise and sunset compasses and so on. Phones obviously do have these features as well, but the fact that you need to download maps offline can actually take up some serious internal storage on your phone. Now that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to these devices, but simply put, these are designed to be used while you ride your bike. All right, so after talking to the crew at bikepacking.com, we all use these devices for the same reason, to follow a track to ensure we stay en route. And we also agree the most important part of choosing one is to have an enjoyable user experience that also has good battery life. All right, so each one of us had our own favorites. Miles likes the Garmin Edge 830 and the E-Trek series, but prefers the user experience on their cycling units. Logan really enjoys the Wahoo Element Bolt for its simplicity, and Lucas enjoys the Karoo 2. Uh, however, he did say he wants to start using more paper maps in 2024. And for me, I am a massive fan of the Garmin Edge 1040 Solar simply because of battery life. It is a little confusing, however, but we have long-term detailed reviews of each one of these units, which can be found below. In a perfect world, I would absolutely love the simplicity of the Wahoo interface with the battery life of the Garmin uh, 1040 solar. That would absolutely be dreamy. All right, so enough of me though. What do you all think? Do you use these devices for bike packing trips? Or if you are using a phone, why? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you like what you saw in this video, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you wanna help support us a little bit more, you can do so by signing up for the Bike Packing Collective. The Bikepacking Collective is our yearly membership that offers a lot of awesome perks, including the twice yearly Bikepacking Journal. So to learn a little bit more about the collective, you can click on the card in the top right corner or also follow the link in the description below. As always, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, pedal further.